In this section of our two F4, F3 Wildcat builds, we will complete the assembly of the fuel pods and the wheel undercarriage to the underside of the aircraft. Please note that we have to open the holes near the leading edge on both wings to attach the fuel pods. This is because the red chevrons that we put on the underside of the wings in Chapter 5 have covered these holes. We take a hobby knife and make a slight puncture through the chevron decals so we can glue the fuel pods in place. Using our favorite adhesive, Zappagap, attach both fuel pods to the underside of each wing. Now we are ready to attach the wheel carriage assembly to the inside of the fuselage. Notice that the wheel carriage assembly is very fragile. It is quite easy to break parts off the assembly. Handle with care. You should be aware that the Hobby Boss instructions are not very clear on how the wheel carriage assembly meets up with the assembly that is inside the fuselage which was put together in Chapter 2 of this series. It is important to test fit this part prior to gluing in place. When you attach this wheel carriage assembly to the inside, doubly make sure that the entire assembly is level vertically and even horizontally. During pre-fit, it was shown that the wheel carriage assembly could be fit out of line, which would make the wheels not straight and the plane would tilt. Now we are ready to glue the wheel carriage assembly to the framework inside the fuselage, making sure that this wheel carriage assembly is both level and straight. <laughs> Gloss coating the model to seal the decals and to protect the paint is very close to the final step in our Wildcat builds. We are using TCP018 clear gloss finish on these F4 F3 Wildcats as the pre World War II US Navy aircraft had a shiny appearance. We attach a two ounce bottle of TCP018 which, as you can see here, has the Badger 2 ounce adapter on it to our Vega 2000 airbrush. Notice that I am spraying the model in a back and forth steady motion, holding the airbrush at about 5 inches from the surface. <laughs> We are spraying the model at about 28 PSI using a medium tip. Completely cover the entire model by turning the model to ensure even coverage of the surface. This will seal all the decals present on the model, on the top side of the wings, the fuselage, as well as the decals on the tail section. It wasn't until the start of World War II that U.S. aircraft for the Army, Navy, and the Marine Corps went to a matte or flat finish on the surface of their aircraft at the beginning of the conflict.
Repeating the procedure as we did on the top of the aircraft, we are spraying the bottom of the aircraft with TCP018 gloss finish and we're using a Vega 2000 airbrush set at 28 PSI. We're going to be spraying back and forth as we did on the top of the aircraft in a slow steady motion. In summary, here is our completed F4 F3 Wildcat built and painted for the aircraft assigned to the USS Ranger prior to January 1941. The colors used were TCP 013 aluminum, TCP 1378 orange yellow for the tops of the wings, TCP 1384 willow green for the tail and stabilizers. TCP 1380 insignia red for the cowling and finish with TCP 018 clear gloss finish. The decals were supplied by Yellow Wings decals for both F4 F3 Wildcat builds. The kit was a Hobby Boss 148 scale F4 F4 modified to an F4 F3 by leaving out one machine gun on the outboard most position on each wing. The models represent a typical U.S. Navy aircraft aboard any of the six existing carriers prior to January 1941, with section colors on the wings, fuselage bands and the front of the cowl, and the orange-yellow wing surfaces. We want to again thank Wayne Tevlin of Yellow Wings Decals for donating all the decals required for these builds. Mm -hmm.